Chapter 6, The Ghost of Mossy Lake. The ghost was terrifying, ghoulish, wrapped in chains and dripping with blood. It waved his arms about, moaning. And then, as if blood and chains and moans weren't enough, Sloan walked right through the ghost. I am not afraid, she declared with her hands on her hips. Ah, screamed the audience. Fascinating, murmured Drake. Scary, whispered now. Grr, growled Dr. Livingston. And then the ghost began to speak. Ooh, I am the ghost of Mossy Lake. You must do what I say. You must put all your money in the jar or else I will haunt you forever. Ooh, ah, screamed the audience again. Hmm, murmured Drake. Sounds fishy, whispered now. Grr, growled Dr. Livingston. Soon the clink of money filled the jar. Nell ignored the money jar and took notes in her notebook using her handy dandy flashlight pen. Every now and then, Drake whispered his observations in her ear, which she jotted down as well. But there was something about the ghost's voice that wasn't quite right. Something Nell couldn't put her finger on. It bothered her, rather like having an itch where you can't scratch. Meanwhile, Dr. Livingston disappeared. The show was over. Same show tomorrow night, said Sloan. Five bucks each. Tell your friends. Now scram. Just then, Dexter Livingston bounded up with something in his mouth. Once in the car, Nell examined it. Hmm, it appears to be a piece of the goat's bloody sheet. Drake held it to his nose. Smeared with ketchup, no less. Was it a trick, asked Mr. Doyle as he drove home? Nell nodded. No doubt. The sheet with ketchup proves it. But how did... But how they did it is the question. It was remarkable. Indeed, Drake pushed off his glasses. The case has me baffled. Let's return to the graveyard tomorrow to search for clues. That is, if it's all right with you, Dad. Affirmative, said Mr. Doyle. The next evening at dusk, they found a new footprint around the grave and tombstone where Sloane had been standing. Same shoe size and print, said Nell, disappointed. Likely Sloane's footprint. Ground solid, observed Drake, jumping up and down a few times. The ghosts couldn't have risen from the soil. No trees overhead to dangle a ghost from either. They circled the area. They scanned the sky. They checked behind the tombstones. And just as they were about to give up, they walked into something hard and flat and invisible. Ow, cried Drake. Ow, cried Nell. Arf, cried Dr. Livingston. Nell rubbed her nose. What the? Drake got up and brushed himself off. He'd fallen backward onto his behind. It's a large sheet of plastic glass, he said, wrapping on its surface, propped up between tombstones, invisible to the audience. Yes, but why, frowns, Nell frowns. This case is becoming more puzzling by the minute. But before Drake could answer, Dr. Livingston took off toward the gardener's shed. Suddenly, Nell had a hunch. She followed Dr. Livingston and tried the door. It opened. Creak. Follow me, Detective Doyle, she hollered as she entered the shed. It was dark and dusty inside. Nell flicked on her pocket pen flashlight. Of course, there was the usual gardener stuff, shovels, rakes, hose, and the like. But there was some other stuff that didn't belong. A white sheet smeared with ketchup and a pile of chains. Not your normal everyday gardening stuff. Aha, whispered Drake. Hmm, murmured Nell. Growl, grr, growled Dr. Livingston. Nell lifted the sheet. There's also a slide protect projector here and a bottle of ketchup. You know, Detective Doyle, something bothered me about the ghost last night. Now I realize what it was. What? The voice of the ghost wasn't coming from where the ghost was standing. Great Scott, exclaimed Drake. You're right. The voice of the ghost was coming from... Inside this shed, they said together. And last night, continued Drake, if I recall correctly, the door of the shed was open, although from where we were sitting, we couldn't see inside. Hmm, Nell thought very hard. And straight out from open doorway is the sheet of plastic glass, finished Drake. I'm thinking I'm beginning to get the picture, said Nell. Ditto, replied Drake. Let's return to the lab for analysis. And then Nell hollered over her shoulder as she flew out the door down the path. It's showtime.